I'm your girl Shauna XO and I'm so excited to be doing this amazing recap. A recap that has never been done before where a podcast just combines both worlds and nationals just straight across the board women that play flag football. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the uh, shoe camp. But just to let you guys know, make sure you stay tuned for the entire show when I tell you it's going to be a movie. When I tell you we got the champs in the building, when I tell you it's going to be crazy, it's going to be crazy. All right, so let's start with shoe camp. And I'm really excited about this shoe camp because these are my new shoes, y'all. Y'all know I like when I get new shoes. But um, I got some red boots for the Christmas. Yeah. And they got the fat kids. So you know when it's a fat kid, you can stay in them at least for three hours. All right. So that's shoe camp. We're going to jump into hot topics, jumping right in. So... Um, and again, this show is both worlds and nationals. So it's just women across the board, football covering the whole thing. So basically, first hot topic is worlds firing one of their directors today. So um, um, they issued a statement. Fireation was so instant. Um, the statement they issued is this. Um, we were made aware of a situation involving one of our directors at a social gathering prior to the tournament. After due diligence and using our best judgment, effective immediately, that director in question has been relieved of his duties and role here at FFWCT. Um, they further said FFWCT is a brand for everyone from all races, creeds, and walks of life. Our events were developed to be safe family environment and our staff will uphold those core values. We have a zero tolerance policy for players or staff members who do not uphold those core values. We firmly stand against any type of racism, violence, bullying, sexism, any other, and any other type of adverse behavior. So with that being said, yeah, they, they'd be firing people over there. So, um, you know, I guess I did come up was and I, I won't say the director's name or go into it or anything like that. Um, but I guess even as a player, even as a director, um, one one to be firing people over there. So, um, you know, I guess I did come up was and I, I won't say the director's name or go into it or anything like that. Um, but I guess even as a player, even as a director, um, one one perspective was, OK, what happened to you know, freedom of speech and shouldn't have consequences. And another perspective is, you know, it's still it's still an organization, it's still a league, it still involves people. So I guess the moral of the story is um, just always be mindful and just be mindful of other people, even in this fun recreational um, environment. So that's what happened with that. Um, next hot topic. I'm so excited about this hot topic um, because literally, you know, here at the podcast, we do our own awards. Organizations can do what they want, but we see what we see. So we do our own award. And we're so excited to do this next award. It is the Podcast Director of the Year Award. That's right. So when you go out here in these tournaments and you see how smooth they run, that doesn't just happen overnight. That is a lot of work put in on the back end by the directors and the people that run the tournament. So we're going to give two directors awards one from worlds one from national so we're going to start with worlds tampa worlds this director uh, is director of the year award why because literally his response time is probably about five seconds if you reach out to him he is going to respond to you not just respond and say hey i'll get back to you he's going to respond to you with a knowledgeable response a respectable response um he will delegate and dictate and, and you know point you in the right direction um he's just really on top of it very um very professional very helpful um so director of the year for world ffwct podcast awards is nate nate Hi, Nate. <laughs> yes yes and if you guys know nate make sure you congratulate him tell him what a great job he does because man he works so hard and it's amazing um you know, to just have that person that anybody can reach out to and get help from. Now, let's move to uh, Nationals, UFFL, um, Director of the Year. This person, extremely knowledgeable, 
very helpful as well. Make sure things run smooth on the front end, back end, right end, left side. Um, and y'all know a little bit of this, I'll be honest. So half of this is because y'all know that's my homie, that's my boy. But the other half is that he totally deserves this. So the uh, Nationals uh, UFFL Director of the Year is James Reese. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Injury reserves list, our next topic. So, you know, in playing this sport that we all love, injury, it's not inevitable, but it can definitely happen. So that's why, you know, jamborees and things are so important to learn proper techniques. Unfortunately, people do get injured. So just the injury reserve mentioned, first and foremost, our very own podcast own Amos the Light. So um, if you didn't know, Amos got hurt in Orlando. Uh, for nationals he was able to he was done for the rest of the day but then he was able to recruit and come back for the next day so he was able to somewhat finish um and then he still showed up in tampa to to ball out you know for his team um and he got hit on a double play so kt threw the ball back so they can do a double pass the guy totally ran through his leg and all his white meat was like pouring out like Ugh. so he got six stitches so Amos, the light is, uh, you know, done for a while. We wish you well, Amos. Get well soon. Um, on the women's side, I want to do a injury reserve mention to Amy. Amy, if you've never seen Amy play, she plays for Lady Venom. She's an incredible player, incredible safety. Um, and sometimes I just watch her Instagram just to see. I just get motivated by her working out, and then I feel like I kind of did. But her workouts are sick. Her abs are incredible. But she broke her leg on Friday. Uh, she couldn't even finish the game. Leg totally broke. So get well soon, Amy. And anybody else who got injured, you know, get well, get well soon. And, um, yeah, just be careful when playing. So that's our injury reserve mentions list. All right. So next we're going to go into um, – Eight women contact. And just a little fun, fun fact, fun little thing. Somebody said, Shauna, do you what's the most entertaining format for women? And I said, Man, I play fives because I love fives non-contact, but I have played eights and I watch sevens. And um I got to see a little bit of Gauntlet. So if you guys have not seen Gauntlet, it's a very interesting format as well for women. But I gotta say, I to you, that person, my vote is gonna go to eight women contact. It is so entertaining, um, especially when you see women like, okay, so I posted earlier. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go to my YouTube page, my Instagram, um, Flag Football Podcast, YouTube, Shauna XO Live. Um, and I posted it. Literally, it was US 8, and her name is Skylar. I had to find out her name. Um, she actually plays for Lady Elite, but she also plays for US 8, and they played at Worlds as a team. And for those of you that ask, what is US 8? It's not Team USA. It's US 8, like the number 8. And basically, this is a combined team of, um, like, basically East Coast, because it has people on the team from the Black Mambas, Elite, APOC, like just East Coast, and they're like a super team, basically. Um, so she plays for US 8, and if you see the footage, she literally picked the girl up, like literally up under her arms like a baby and laid her down. So, and in full action, eight women is so, it's just entertaining. Um, there was another one, you know, Jackie Jack be balling. Jackie's always balling. Literally, they flattened, it was Lady Supreme, which also combined with Lights Out. So it was Lights Out Supreme that created an eight women's team. Lights Out Supreme is a really strong team and they actually went head to head with US 8 at the Worlds for the eight women world championship. Now US 8 came out on top. They came out supreme uh, with the score uh, 6-0. But man, Lights Out Supreme, eight women contact team was laying out bodies all weekend long. It was so fun to watch so yeah my vote is eight women contact is really entertaining all right y'all so that's that now we are going to move to um man a team that's in the building a team that uh went to nationals and did a crazy thing especially when you think about their story we got some special some special stuff in here for them we're gonna get that lit up for them um 
And so just to give y'all a little bit about this team store, their history before we bring them up. And I want to say this, I want to say this, because of all the podcasts I've done, you guys have not seen this coach in the building for a long time. So it's so exciting and so special to get an exclusive from him tonight. So I'm really excited about that. But just a little bit about their story. Their story is kind of like the color purple in a sense. It just didn't seem like they were going to make it at one point. It just seemed like, wow, everything was against them. But this team came back, they clapped back, they won um, tournament championship. They came back and they won league championship. And then they went to nationals. They went to nationals. They were definitely the team to beat. Um, everyone was definitely looking at them. Um, and they had to fight hard on that Sunday playing four games back to back to back. And they came out on top. You guys, let's, let's make some noise. Let's definitely make some noise for the Atlanta Lady Tigers, the national DC champions. Come on. Deserve the cakes. So, yeah, we're doing cakes. We're doing cakes here. We are definitely doing cakes. Oh, man. Okay, there we go. There we go. We're getting cakes for the champions. Yes, yes. So, welcome. And I know some of the ladies are probably going to join a little bit later, y'all. But we want to go ahead and get started with the leadership of this team. And, and that's, that's the core of it. And one person that you guys never really see is Coach Ray. You, you, he's behind the scenes. He's working hard. Introduce yourself, Coach Ray. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, Coach Ray, I mean, I'm not publicly known and popular like these two people here, but, you know, I'm definitely on the scene. Uh, if you're a part of the Lady Tigers, if you ever seen this man walking around any tournament, then you pretty much see me. We joined at the hip. He's Batman on Robin. Uh, I came from coaching men and... Uh, he brought me into this wonderful world of coaching women, and uh, I'm here to stay, and I love it. I love the fact that you know your role. You said, I'm Robin. Oh, that, that right there, that's dope. And Coach Milton, the one and only, the world famous, and you really got that edge. You gotta love me with that edge, What is going on? How you doing? Good, good, good. How you doing tonight? Great, good to be back. Like y'all upgraded. Right. You yeah, we, you know, we doing... We got the crow's nest, right? Right. <laughs> Somebody got some sponsorship dollars. <laughs> Man, in the backbone of the team, this girl, you, you, you might see her out front, you might see her on the field, but you know she's always behind that computer, the backbone, the team manager, Brandis. Hello. How are you doing? All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. Coach. So I know that some of your players are still going to be coming in to join, and we will definitely bring back up the players, the players segment. But it's so cool to have the leadership up here just to kind of get to the meat and potatoes of things off the field, behind the scenes. You want me to fan these out? Cause yeah, Brandy, go ahead. Let's, let's, let's fan those out. Okay. The candles, but I set the mic cord on fire. Just <laughs> blow them up. No, because it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. That is true. Does this help? Here, Brandy, try that. No, she said no because of COVID, which is true. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get, um, man. Okay, yeah, we got those blown out. We'll get a cover on them, too. There we go. Okay, cool. So, Coach, let's start with, I, I said we're going to go backwards. Okay. Right. So, if you're just joining us, this is the leadership team, and the girls are going to join us later, but this is the leadership team behind the Atlanta Lady Tigers. I'm going to say the world famous Atlanta Lady Tigers because you, if you play flag football, you know the Atlanta Lady Tigers. Whether you want to or not, you're going to hear them coming. They're going to be making noise. You're going to see them with the fog. It's there. Um, so we're going to go. We're going to start backwards, Coach. We're going to start with this national championship. I want to know, um, because the, the Lady Tigers, how long have the Lady Tigers been in existence, basically, and how long it's taking you to get a national championship? Because you guys are the first team in Atlanta to bring not home for women. That's correct. Uh, 2016? 2016. Five years national champions what was the talk like because you guys have done this five times in a row what was the talk like where you guys knew that this was the year well i attribute a lot of our success to uh people don't talk about it much they think they talk about the talent they talk about coaching but i attribute a lot of our success to the, the experience you know i told them we won our first championship i think at lynn lewis um i told them the other championships would be easier after that because you learn 
You learn the process, you learn, you learn the path of champions. You know where you gotta be, when you gotta be, you know what games you gotta win, what games you gotta, you know, make sure you take care of. So I, I, I attribute all the success to the experience. I had a lot of experienced ladies, like one just walked in, Jelena, um, Brandis. Um, they knew the path to the championship. Everything about Sunday was, everything about that weekend was about that last game. And they knew the path. Okay, okay. And since we're going backwards, you guys were in the championship game versus the Lady Warriors. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm going to be honest, y'all. Listen, when I saw Lady Warriors in the championship game, and this is no shade to the Lady Warriors. I like them a lot. I've practiced with them. I was a little bit like, oh, oh, wow, congratulations. Then um, then somebody, you know, people people send me stuff all the time. And it was like, well, look at the roster. You know, it was different. Now, it's two sides to that coin. One side is people stack their teams all the time to go to nationals and another side is well that's not really your team so did your team really you know what i mean but here here nor there um the lady warriors were in the championship and kudos to reggie because i say you know what stack and, and win and that's, a, that's that's the thing but when you guys saw the new lady warriors in the championship and you saw that they had beaten teams you know like the rebels you know like the stallions did your game plan change what was the thought process then no we beat all those teams they beat so it didn't really matter the most important thing about the Warriors is that I was walking over and they was like, well, these are not the Atlanta Warriors. And I was like, you know, that means they also don't know who we are. You know, so just as much as we got to prepare for them, they had to prepare for us. But I got to be honest about our team and our mission and our goal that that very moment we was walking over, it was a done deal. Like, it was not going to happen. That's just, that's just, I don't care who they put out there. We was hoping to play, if you know, you know, whoever, it don't matter. That championship belonged to us and we was not going to let it slide slide that we talked about it all weekend hell all year like so the warriors being there was definitely a surprise uh, and it was a second surprise being the warriors new addition i guess you could say um but it was a, our game plan hadn't changed all year let alone for that game so we stuck to what we do um we talk about a thousand reps and a thousand reps at what we do every day um we plan accordingly, and just like we went through the tournament, we, went, went, we approached that game the same way, as you can see on film. Yeah, the film was great. Shout out to Tiger. She'd be out there, man. I don't know how she gets out of the way when she sits down. I'd be like, somebody going somebody gonna to get Tiger and they go back down to where that ball. We we didn't care. Like, we talked about, we took, everybody know we took a loss to uh, chaos. Chaos, chaos. Chaos. Yeah. Nine one nine chaos. Nine one nine chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 everybody. I didn't tell the team, but I. I mean, I told the coaching staff, like Angelina and I always talk about it. We needed that. Like we, I, I hope for that at times. You need some humility at times. You know, when you're playing uh, long tournaments like that, you need somebody to like wake up. Now I know you're good, but you know you can get got. You know, mm -hmm. so I was really. I, I didn't even get mad, right? I didn't get mad. I was very appreciative of that loss because of what we said going went back to the house that night, like. Anybody, any any of these 18 teams, we could bust that, you know, we can beat them. So it don't matter who they put in front of us. It doesn't matter how many games we got to play. We just got to go do what we got to go do. And the best thing that could have happened was well, we got hit in the mouth. Mm, mm. Did you, were there any players in that game or anybody that just said, you know what, they, they really stepped up from that game to the next day? Well, you know, we got a lot of, we got a lot of personalities. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very, they was pissed at me because I, I said, I don't want to say it. I didn't want to say it publicly, but I got to be honest about it. We, we put some different people in the game mm -hmm. for chaos. Like, we, we, we shuffled a roster. And that's, that's respectfully to say. We shuffled a roster for the chaos game. And that's no shot at chaos, but it wasn't about nobody about us. It wasn't about anybody but us. And we shuffled a roster because we kept talking about, me and Ray talking about balancing the workload for the entire marathon, not the sprint. Mm. So... I needed, I needed my, my best people to be ready for Sunday. And so we had done some good stuff prior to chaos, but we started making some substitutions and, and, and some experimenting and, and things um, on the chaos game. So people were really upset about that. My Aisha Rufus, for one, she's my dog. And she was like, look, man, you ain't playing. <laughs> she was like, look, man, you ain't playing me. Like, I'm like, listen, trust the vision. You know? So, and in that game, me and her, didn't, we, weren't, we weren't really friends at that time, but... <laughs> it paid off, right? So. Okay, so basically you put in your less experienced players doing the 919 chaos. 
no disrespect to Nawa Nine Chaos. You you didn't put in your top dogs because it, you you do have to play the whole weekend. And and if you've never seen Eight Women Contact live, if you're new to this, then it, it is a back to back three day weekend. And sometimes you play three four games in one day. And so I think that logically it made sense for not, you to not put to mention in. the other styles that, that the ladies play too. And other styles because I know one year I think last year Lisa told me she played ten games in one weekend. Austin did too. Right. It was like ten games in one weekend. Right. So. Championship game is 18. Eight, the game number 18? 18. Yeah, see, everybody ain't built like that. I'm not built like that, okay? Yeah. It, was it. A, it was definitely a, a, a decision that had to be made. Again, I talk about the experience of us being there. Mm -hmm. We knew what we had to do. Had it been last year, we probably played everybody the whole, the whole time. But we knew what we had to do. And I shout out to Jelena, Brandis, and, and other veteran players that are coming up to me and coming to my aid in talking to that player, like, listen, and Jelena can tell you what she told her. Speak to that. Well, first of all, when we lost on Saturday, I told Milton, I told the whole group. Lost on Friday. Friday. I said, listen, I've seen teams go 3-0 and mm -hmm. for our first day of playoffs, first game of playoffs. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen, I've seen teams go 1-2 and two and they just make it to Sunday. It's all about making it to Sunday, because Sunday is a whole new attitude. Yeah, it's a whole new attitude, and we knew what we had to do. Literally, championship game. A lot of us was looking at each other on offense. It was like, look, I don't have nothing left. I I didn't have anything left. She can't but I up. said, yeah. I, but I said I owe this team to give it what I got, and I gave it what I had, and I think everybody did that. So, you know, we we dug deep and we did what we needed to do. Offense it. had defense back, and defense had offense back. So I love it. And coach, we're gonna go into some viewer questions that I did pull a few. Um, <laughs> And so these ones, and I should call them DM questions, um, viewer DM questions that are coming. Um, the first question is, you guys have won the league. You've won nationals. Um, you, the Tigers did post that they're going to go A for everything. What's next? Win an A. <laughs> win A. Win this year. You got it. Win A this year. Right. So that's what it is. Win A this year. for. What else is, what else is? Look, yeah. after that. Let me explain. I think West Coast, maybe they're looking for you guys to go go out to the West Coast. They can't, pick it up they to can't compete. Right. The West Coast can't compete. We, we Listen, um, let me be clear about something. Um, the Tigers have had a plan for those five years from day one, which is why we stuck to our guns about what we plan on doing. Mm -hmm. We didn't plan on jumping around from A to B for egotistical reasons. We had planned to win B and A and be the only team in this sector that won B and A. It's very possible, believe it or not, because back in 2016, Nobody thought this was possible because it hadn't happened. But it's going to happen in A as well. And we're trying to get done this year. That, so this year, let me make, this year, you guys are coming to win A. You're going to beat everybody in the league. That's the goal. I'm going to let Ray answer that. We're coming that's, to that's, win whenever we can see. <laughs> so we, we, and trust me, like, it, it per, me personally, it pissed me off because we heard all the, oh, the Tiger too good for B, the Tiger too good for B. We appreciate that. But we move to our own beat. We move how we want to move. You understand what I'm saying? So... If we say we're a B team, you feel like we're an A team, the only thing that matters is what we say. So our goal is, we said it, we knew that we were good coaches. We said no matter how good we get, we're not going to move up to A until we win B. Not that we're scared, not that we're ducking competition, not that we're intimidated, but that's a goal because nobody in Atlanta has won B. So now that we have, we made history. And like you said, if, when we turn around, and I say win because it's going to happen. When we turn around to win A, we'll be the only women's team in the country to have an A and B, the only other team that can do that is uh, Windy City Forest. Um, uh, what's the team out of D.C.? Uh, Capital Punishment. Mm -hmm. Dora Milaje. They, they got B titles actively now <laughs> along with us. So they're the only other team so that can do it. win B and A. So we, we're kind of in a race to try to make history in the country to do that. So. Right. I love it. I love it. Next question is, I posted you guys' uniform. So it was definitely some interesting things on that. So the question was, where did the inspiration come from? The great brand is Bill. <laughs> and if you guys did not see their uniform and what we're talking about, stand up, Brandon. Yeah. I don't have on the full uniform. She doesn't have on the full uniform, <laughs> but basically... Jacket and some thatch, you know. MLK Weekend, <laughs> this is... <laughs> and turn around, let me see the back. Brandon, what you got on the back? <laughs> Bell, okay, so I'm not glad that's her number. So basically, the whole team wore MLK uniforms, flags, and they warmed up to I Have a Dream, everything Martin Luther King. So no other team in history has ever done that to make like 
it's nationals is always on MLK weekend. No other team has ever taken it to another level to say, oh yeah, we're gonna honor this week. We're gonna do something different. Because I was looking for the Tigers and I was like, who's that in the black? Who's that in all that black? Mm -hmm. yeah, it Let's was a magical, magical season. Here we go. Let's talk about it's magical. That. Sorry. It's I'm magical season. Up. And the flags have. And I guess shouts out to Shrooms. No doubt. He, no somehow doubt. he always on everybody's hips. <laughs> <laughs> Shrooms. No discount. Everybody's hips. Um, wow. So it has literally different phases of different walks. 115, 19, 29. The whole purpose of going to Florida. Not a king. If you can fly, run. If you can run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Wow. All right. I love this, Brando. What was behind this? Where did this even come from? You've been going for five years. This is new. Um, well, when we won the championship and then we won Lynn Lewis, we had an influx of cash that you know, <laughs> prior to those wins, we did not That's have. Good. And um, cash makes things happen. <laughs> so um, we knew that we were going to do kind of uh, something special for nationals but we were just thinking it was just going to be another tiger uniform and i had for literally months thought about like well what is this uniform going to look like i went through so many different design iterations because all of the uniforms since our first uniform which was like some tony the tiger shit was like designed by me <laughs> and the first uniforms i actually had ripped off from another team That's and funny. i was like why am i doing this i could just design these shits on my own so i was like well let's Let's think about, you know, women's bodies and let's think about like what looks good on like women. So our first couple of uniforms, they were cool, but this uniform, we really wanted it to do a couple of things. We wanted to number one, make a statement. And then we also wanted to like come down there and everybody just know it's us, you know, no matter where we were. So I thought about um, the Hawks and um, when they came out, during the BLM movement with the MLK uniforms. It was just so iconic. And you can't really think about Atlanta without thinking about MLK. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we play every year on MLK weekend. So it was like, here we are every year going down here, like, yay, we off on Monday, but nobody ever says anything about it. Nobody ever acknowledges the reason that we're here. I mean, it's not the reason why we're here, but the reason that we get to come here and then come back and not be jet lagged and tired because we get a day off, but it's supposed to be a day on. And I said, well, what if we just basically knock off the Hawks uniforms <laughs> and do some Tigers uniforms? <laughs> Like copyright. the Hawks uniforms with the MLK. I mean, it's not copyright. It's his name. So what you going to do, you know? Um, the honesty. He owned himself. But um, when I thought about it, I was like, I don't know if the girls going to go for this. They might think it's lame. And what I really appreciate about this group of girls, obviously, we've had the team for four or five years now. And this group in particular is the only group that has just kind of let me do whatever. Because I have had years and years and years of pushback uh, from various groups of girls who are no longer with us that just felt like, you know, my ideas were stupid or it felt like, you know, I didn't know what I was talking about or just wanted to have some kind of control over it. And I was just always kind of like, fine, you guys go on ahead, do something. And nobody would ever like give me any input. So this year I was like, well, I'm going to try and get input from the girls and then I'm going to try and, you know, shoot them some stuff. And this year they were just like, yeah, do whatever you want. So I was like, say less. <laughs> say less. I love um, it. So when we got down there, it was like an immediate confirmation that, you know, what we were trying to do was a good idea because literally everyone was like, first of all, the, the jersey didn't say Tigers. It just said MLK. The pants said Tigers, but nobody knew who we were. So everybody was just asking, who are y'all? Who are y'all? And it was almost better that it didn't say Tigers because it made people ask the questions. And it started a conversation. And some people stole a few of our flags. So um, <laughs> they did. Flags, they I don't did. know. Who but if flag? you ever see somebody with a flag and I'm they and a Tiger, it. they stole that shit. I'm going to take it. <laughs> so... Um, we were excited that we were able to pay homage to him. His birthday was literally that Saturday. So we only had one game that day. And we were like, listen, we got to win this game. Because to be honest, if we didn't win the game, we might not have made it to Sunday. Mm. So it was like we warmed up to the I Have a Dream speech. And 
it was just kind of like a, a vibe, you know, the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. We were playing with Try MLK's seven. name on our chest, and we knew that we couldn't Act the fool. be acting a fool. We couldn't be getting ejected. <laughs> we couldn't be, you know, forfeiting games. So you mean Trina and Janelle no, acted right? Trina and Janelle, y'all acted right? Okay. <laughs> they right. did. They did. They were on their best behavior, for real, for real. So I was really proud of all of the girls, and, you know, I think that if he was here, he would be proud of us. Um, and we, we, we really wanted to win this year in his uniform because we also knew iconic that would be for Atlanta because we brought it back to our city, you know, repping Stop. a guy who literally is our city. And it just felt almost so much better having his name on our chest and wearing those rings. Wow, wow. Well, you guys, this is Atlanta Lady Tigers leadership. Um, if you ever wanted to know who was the brains, the everything behind those ladies that hit the field each and every week and hit the field nationals and probably coming to a city near you soon. They Absolutely. on a roll and they're going to be in the A division. Um, they also shared their um, national stage with uh, five versus five women uh, champions, B.O.B. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to B.O.B. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see them, but B.O.B., congratulations. Um, they also shared it with, you know, and next year they will be um, the eight women pro division champions. Congratulations to Key and her lady Evie squad. Those girls played hard and... Man, it was tough for Lady Elite because, you know, going into it, they had beat Black Mamas in the, in the league, but then they lost them in the championship in the last couple seconds. And then to get down to nationals, and it's like, man, we it could go either way. Both teams knowing it can go either way. Right. And for Lady Elite to pull it out, being that Black Mamas has won it so many years, year over year over year. Mm -hmm. So big congratulations to y'all. Big congratulations, man. Those girls were really celebrating. They put that hat in the trophy and put the trophy in the seat. <laughs> That's how we did our first year. Yeah, that was smart. It was, it was yeah. nice. Uh, <laughs> congratulations Mind to um, SoFlo, seven women screen championship champion. Um, so, SoFlo. And uh, congratulations, to 8 Perez, 30 for 30, Lauren and her whole crew over there. And. Um, yeah, we're going to get to the five versus five non-contact co-ed champions. They're actually in the building as well. We're going to talk to them, and their names are Killer Instinct. And so we're bringing the Tiger girls back up here once some of the girls get in. And we want to thank you guys. Don't go anywhere. Just have you guys hang out for a second. We'll bring the girls back up just to kind of close it out before we go. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank, thank you so much. This is Tiger Leadership again. We got Coach Ray, Coach Man. And Coach Ray said he is the Robin to his Batman. Rewind it if you didn't see it. And then Brando, the team manager. Right now we're going to bring up, you know, those five versus five non-contact co-ed champions. Killer Instinct is in the building. And don't come, come on over here. Y'all got to make some noise. It's not easy to win a championship. Hello. Yep, I'm watching. Yep. Yep, yep. Woo! Let me see that trophy. I want to feel it. I want to feel it. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. All right. Beautiful. Man, beautiful. Y'all, Killer Instincts is in the building. CJ. An Atlanta team. National champions. This is big for the city. This it is, is big, big, big. All right, so let's introduce ourselves, Eric. Let's let's, let's introduce everybody and show them rings. Let me see them rings. Oh, I'm in my. He got them on. <laughs> all right, let's introduce everybody. All right, all right. Uh, appreciate you, Shauna. Um, obviously, uh, we got five co-ed in the building and whatnot, and something. Come on, Ty and TJ, bring it on up. Uh, something special about this one is this is, you know, a format that um, Atlanta's just starting to get used to. And so, really, this was kind of huge being the first five co ed team from Atlanta to bring home a championship. So, that was really huge for us. Huge. Tell us the team that you did it with, Eric. Got you. Obviously, we got, and we actually went out to with two teams because of the, obviously the growth of fives. Mm -hmm. But we got Ty, we got TJ, we got B Gross. Uh, Ev, we got Blaze, we got Adi, we got B-more. I mean, we got the plethora of people with Lisa, we had PJ, Abby, 
KT, Javion, we, I mean, we come in deep with it. So it was tremendous that, you know, this format is growing so quickly with five women's, fives, five men. Um, Atlanta's really trying to put a stake into this um, small ball game. Man, and you are leading that stake, Eric. Um, I just want to say thank you to that, to you for that as well, because like you said, fives was not here. And for somebody to actually be like, you know, we could do this. Let's let's run with the fives. And you're, if you didn't hear him, he said that he has multiple teams. So that's big. So let's start with the uh, championship Sunday. Um, that that whole game, who you guys faced, what the talk was like in the huddle. Like, we made it here. Are we going to finish? What was your talk like? Um, I think overall the perspective was um, there was a little adver adversity that both teams went through throughout the whole weekend. And just to even get to that point, it was ironic that both teams were so successful that we end up playing each other in the semifinal. <laughs> which, which was a good attest that both teams were doing good and um, everything like that. But then... Um, Basically, K.I. would against 30 for 30. Great team. Gene does a great job of really putting, you know, some great talent together and everything like that. And it came down to the last play. You know, obviously, a lot of people were talking about how the refs were and, you know, situations like that. There was a couple calls here and there. But I think battling through that adversity after we had to get the um, I think we had to get the directors involved because of some bad calls. But I think the team just held her together. And I think one thing we did was. Not only did Volume 1 had it on it, Volume 2 was right there in the midst with them. So just as if they were playing in the game. So I think that big family environment holding it together and then came up with a big defensive stop. They scored. They was down by three, so they had to go for three. Defense stepped up. Ball game. Wow. So <clears throat> in the semifinals, mm -hmm. we have to play each other. <laughs> What's your other team? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll let hey, B more. B more can talk on it a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> In reality, we played our JV team. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just joking. Wow. But no, honestly, it's like, like, like Eric said, this is all love. This is one big family. Um, to have the opportunity to play against each other, it was just kind of fun. Uh, I will say volume one kind of messed up because we were supposed to go 3-0, and and it was supposed to be our bracket and their bracket would meet in the middle, but I think we went wound up uh, going 2-1, and one, so we wound up going in their bracket. But uh, Lisa wasn't there, so that wasn't uh, wasn't cool because, you know, Lisa's a she's a stud. Uh, so, uh, that She wasn't there, so it might have been a different game if she was there, but we wound up winning it, and uh, but ultimately we won the national title, KI. So that was cool. Man, man, man. Yeah, I heard, I heard Austin has a fun fact for us about Lisa. So fun fact about Lisa. <laughs> oh, okay. So Lisa put up more points than any male QB in Orlando that weekend. <laughs> Wow, where are QB at? Where are KT in the mess so we can talk to them? Oh, about they'll, they'll be on the way traffic. But um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, outside of Lisa, um, there's one other young lady that really stood out in this whole tournament and actually was not only the office of MVP, but the overall Division Two MVP, and that is Miss Ebony Smith. Yeah. So I think it's a good chance for you to go to the championship. Well, I love me some Ebony, boy. She's too fast. <laughs> Ebony, Ebony, Ebony. Easily the best female. Easily the best say. female. <laughs> Too quick, you just gotta go for her whole waist. You gotta hug her. I, I, or you could go for her head like that guy. Did. Hey, her flag. Ever. You must have that to Ever. The guy. I mean, what number championship is? I mean, I mean, nationals is this for you because you played different styles. Mm -hmm. So what what number is this? This is my third one, I think. Third national. Wow. You know the way my knees feel. <laughs> amazing <laughs> since I stopped playing so I doubt it I feel like I had my run and I enjoyed it and I'm so happy for the Tigers I, they got their win so I'm happy for them um but I just yeah I'm just like even with them winning I'm just like I don't like I'm happy for them but I don't I'm not like even then, I don't feel anything towards it. Like, I'm just, I feel like I've lived my life for eights, and I don't foresee myself going back to it for a while, if I do go back. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> That's a little wonder. might be. Coach, 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 coach
Time got some time. So, um, Foz, do you think that you will go into Gauntlet next? Oh, wow! Ooh, Gauntlet, Gauntlet's a, um, a different beast because Gauntlet is five contact. Um, but I like the I like the style of Gauntlet because you go with uh, you got to be from your same state, mm -hmm. and then you only can have seven players. So it's uh, it's a different style. I probably may let uh, be more TJ some of my eight man people maybe lead up on some of that. So that might be something we'll get into. But we got a few more other formats coming down the pipe though. Nice. Now one thing that's really cool with this team, you guys. Um, I got the chance. Because I actually think that Worlds and Nationals on separate days, like separate weekends, was dope because it allowed teams to do what you guys did. And y'all balled out at Worlds. I literally was just like, this is crazy. Everything on your team was a weapon. But compare the two for us and for everybody who's thinking, you know, or who's only been to one or the other. Uh, I would probably say in a fair comparison, I think, with um, Nationals, it's kind of more geared towards that nine-man, eight-man, eight kind of like contact, because mm -hmm. you saw more of the prominent teams at, you know, Orlando when it comes to contact and nine-man. And then um, in terms of small ball, like the fives, the fours, and maybe even a little bit of the co-ed, saw a little bit more swing with FFWCT. But at the end of the day, you just have to bring it. I mean, it's still great competition coming from multiple areas in the country. Um, you still had stellar performances from a lot of individuals. And I think um, it was kind of beneficial to have them on two different weekends. <laughs> I don't know about back-to-back -back weekends, especially for <laughs> organizations like myself that's trying to do both. Because that's, I mean, that's taxing. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of travel. That's a lot of money. And, um, a lot of vacation days. A lot of vacation days. <laughs> <laughs> too many, too soon. The year just and started. And so, um, unfortunately, we wasn't able to take down both uh, five teams, but we were able to kind of do that collaboration with that one. Uh, came up a little bit short in the quarterfinals, but just the energy and the effort was still there. And I think that was some key nuggets that we can build on from now, because now it's up to me working with leadership to make sure we are in those right tournaments so we can accumulate those points get ready for the whole year and that was my next question yeah. tournaments because when you guys go to tournaments now people see that name literally sometimes i won't front i'll look at stuff and be like oh okay academy is there lady venom's there i don't know about that <laughs> so people are going to be doing that they're going to be like oh killer instincts we're good but so which tournaments are you guys going to be going towards gearing towards uh, actually, we're actually going to do a good blend of both. Uh, obviously, supporting a lot of uh, Jace's tournaments. And actually, um, his Weekend Warrior tournament coming up mm -hmm. is going to be big for five. He actually is going to spotlight five co-ed. The reason why is because all the winners of fives uh -huh. for both UFFL and FFWCT will be in the same bracket. What you say? I'm excited. Yeah. So basically, this tournament, what's the date? Where is it going to be? Um, more is that the end of april right uh, it april 1st, 2nd, 3rd. oh april 1st and 2nd so so the bracket will include you know obviously we were the division two champions killer instinct the division one champion tbd the um, pro champion which is pound for pound mm -hmm. and the comp champion ess will be all in the same bracket you guys you guys yeah, that's big. That's huge. So we are really going to get to see who is the best of the best combined FFWCT, UFFL, and, and who takes it home. I'm excited to see that. This is Killer Instinct. This is Eric, the whole crew, um, our national champions. Absolutely. So amazing. So amazing. While you guys are still up here, um, they actually participated in both nationals and worlds. Um, but we're going to go through worlds while you guys are sitting up here the world champions um people that won that um and if you have any insights on that because will you guys be back to worlds next year absolutely uh we already working on a calendar we'll go to the to ffwct nationals in la mm -hmm. in august and then definitely do worlds our objective is to hit their majors which is the orlando and charlotte and then we'll sprinkle in a few other formats and the key thing for us is we're going to have the two teams so um killer instinct that just recently won they'll be bumped up to the pros and the a levels and then we'll still be working with lisa with volume two 
Volume and, two. And then volume two is don't don't sleep on volume two. Like hey. dead serious because with with having a female QB, well, it, it, QB. it opens open up everything. That's more points now. Worlds doesn't give you more points for for a female, right? Or does it? Did they give you more points? Because I know Orlando Nationals does when you have that female QB, because um, it's more points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any in, any playing with you know either throwing or catching with a female is nine points. So Ebony was a prime example. Of like literally, she'll catch a seven yard play out of there. Yeah, <laughs> and she was embarrassing male. So that's that, a lot of oohs and ahs came from a lot of Ebony's plays. And then Lisa, she probably we with volume two outside of that one day, she probably averaged about. 30 to 40 points per game. Insane. Insane. That's so insane. Go. Well, congratulations. This is Killer Instincts, and they're going to help me announce the world championships, and then we're going to bring the Tigers back up here so that we can make sure we close out really strong, you guys. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to all the teams that went to either Nationals right. or Worlds. It is such a big deal to even, one, get a team together to go and compete. Super congratulations to all the winners um, and all the women that are just doing it. Big. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> One big thing, too, Shauna, is, mm -hmm. um, you know, not just about fives, but, you know, remember when I first came on the podcast and was like, okay, it's on a couple teams in co-ed. A uh, big shout-out to A co-ed. Yeah. Big shout-out to A co-ed. Had, um, I want to say, about five. They had the Assassins. They had Dark Side, Dynasty, New Jack, MIS. Was that it? About five? Yeah, five. 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 five of the 14 teams came out of Atlanta. And then, like, maybe, what, two years ago, you only probably had the two? Yeah. Tremendous growth in the co-ed world. And now we got teams not only getting the eights, we got fives. You got two, volume one, volume two for Killer Instinct. You got Super Saiyans, Dark Side. You got this, you got that. It's just the... Uh, I'm ecstatic about the growth of co-ed. And so many people are getting involved with co-ed. It's no longer that, oh, it's just friendly. No, it's, it's competitive out there. And a lot of people are embracing it, especially from the contact world coming over. It's it's huge. And hopefully we continue to grow that. It's huge. And Nationals is going to become small. This is my prediction. Nationals is going to become small ball heavy, too, pretty soon. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to. They're going to be both heavy. Um, but congratulations in Worlds 5 versus 5. Women's Gauntlet champions, light. Oh, like so, a big team. Yeah. Yes, you know the name, brand. They, they have a great team. Um, Bree, I mean, they they do a great collaboration of having people from different areas yeah. from the um, West Coast. They got Nancy, and then they got Mariah from LA. They got yeah, yeah, phenomenal Tuché, talent. Kansas, all yeah. those girls. Congratulations to five women non-contact pro, the North. The Congratulations, North. international teams took home pro and competitive five versus five women at Worlds. Congratulations to the five versus five. Um, non-contact competitive uk dudes y'all come all the way across the world over here and winning. so congratulations yeah. to you ladies very solid team i saw them actually play in their championship schemes concepts and they, they were all about business seven amazing they were um well well earned and they had to play uh panama so very well earned uh championship congratulations to the seven women's screen champions none other than adrenaline me and her adrenaline girls over there so congratulations Yes, yes. Oh, and oh, before we go to the five, big shout out to WAP representing down there. You know, yeah. We did good, y'all. We did good. Listen, WAP did good. We lost in five time overtime to Panama to six like six five zero. overtimes. I was tired. <laughs> like I was like, okay. Five overtime. I'm about to let y'all. I'm tired. We ain't let y'all score, okay? But I was. It, it was a thought. <laughs> I was tired. I was like, and they were. They were so quick. They were like a bunch of Ebony's on one team. Imagine that. Oh wow. Like I can't keep up with this. I'm about to, you know. Uh, but it was so good playing them. And then we lost. We we lost. The, listen, if I can, if I can, if I can be harsh on everybody, I'll be harsh on my team too. We did really good. I'm really proud of my team. Day two, we really came out knocking heads and just really playing smart. Um, we lost all three of our games, so we. Did not make it into Sunday, um, but we lost 6-0 game one, 6-0 game two, and then overtime, five-time overtime by one score. So, okay. You know, uh, but it was good for us to just go and get that experience. I'm so proud of my girls, Nisa, and, you know, this is just everybody. Um, yeah, we did good. And we have the cute uniforms, which I'm big on, colors. Okay, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so that's a lot. Okay. And then um, eight women, I'm um, sorry, eight women Contact, congratulations to US8. Oh, wow, that all-star team. Yes, that's a crazy Lord. team. 
Yeah, there's so many people, and Lady Elite, and I was like, wow, they, yeah. It's a superhero team, and I had a chance to talk to Coach Brent, and I said, mm -hmm. I watched the game, great game, action packed. I was literally screaming and yelling, um, and I did, I did say this, I, just, I said, Coach Brent, you got a superstar team here. I did expect y'all to run that score up, and not that, because they played lights out. Supreme. Supreme, right? Um, which is a really good team. They are dog team. Yeah. But I did expect this superhero team to run the score up even more. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're, they're doing some adjustments there, but they, they still did a great job. It was crazy to watch. Absolutely. I mean, doing that adjustment and getting that chemistry in that little short period of time, Fisher did a good job. Yeah. And then the energy on, on that stage when they won that thing is... Yes! <laughs> and then when they played Boosted for them, <laughs> ah, yes. shut this off. It was good. And yeah. then um, congratulations to Lady Supreme, five women contact. Supreme is about that contact. Oh, yeah, they're about, they're about that, that contact. Yeah, they, uh, congratulations they to the championship there. So, right now, we're going to bring the Tigers back up here so we can close it out with final announcements and talk to any of the players that want, that just came in. Right. So we're going to close it out together. So we got champions from Atlanta. We got Killer Instincts and the Atlanta Lady Tigers all in one screenshot right here, y'all. So make sure y'all screenshot this. Um, that's right. We got Killer Instincts, Atlanta Lady Tigers, first women's team to bring home a national championship to this city. Um, really the first five co-ed team to bring home a national championship yes, to this city. So it's a whole lot of firsts going on around here. And while we close it out and while those girls come up here so we can get that one big shot of all these champions in one picture, I'm going to do some close-up announcements. Brawl for it all is going to be July 29th through the 30th um, here in Atlanta. So you can reach out to Five Star Sports for that. Um, and I'm just doing some announcements while the Tiger girls come up here so we can get all the champions in one big screenshot. October 8th through the 9th is um, Lynn Lewis Tournament. This year, Lynn Lewis will be in... Um, D.C. Y'all, I'm excited, but I'm like, if this cold, I ain't with it. <laughs> I, I'm excited, but I'm like, if this cold, I don't know about this, but we coming because you know what? D.C. always supports everywhere. Absolutely. So there's no way people cannot come there. So that's Lynn Lewis. It's a fives and seven women's um, tournament. Um, the Caribbean Bowl is going to be in the Dominican Republic, and that's March 12th through the 13th. It's only $2.95 per team, and you can get some all-inclusive resorts for $99. I looked, and then the flights from Atlanta are like $300. So if you want to go, that bowl is going on. Then we have eight versus eight co-ed registration is now open. That league is starting March 16th. It's $65 per person. And to people that complain about $65 per person, I got a, D, I got a message today about playing on Sunday mornings with the, um, you know, another league. I think said $95 per person. You know what I'm talking about, Austin. I see your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying that. But um, anyway, so co-ed, eight versus eight co-ed. $65 per person, March 16th. And then August 6th through 7th is eight women contact in Raleigh tournament. So, um, yeah, make sure you guys sign up for that. It's going to be great. And for all things women's flag highlights, and I'll be posting a lot more things on there from worlds and nationals, you can follow me, your girl Sean XO on YouTube, Sean XO Live. And right now we're going to turn it back to all the champions. We can't, we got to get some of y'all over here to get y'all in the shot. Y'all are not in the shot. Y'all, one more big round of applause while we close it out. Atlanta Lady Tigers, eight women national champion. Uh, and then we have Killer Instance in the building. I see Tree Tree in the building. Tree Tree ain't never good though. Put the mic. I, you know what I'm doing. I can't. I can't. You cannot come up here. Now. And Anissa? 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 Hi, honey. Oh, Tree, Tree, we close it out. Tree, Tree, you going to help me close out. But I had to talk to you because you, you never come out for interviews. I, you and Coach, make sure we get this home view. You're being the best rusher in the Southeast. <laughs> Trina, best rusher respectfully. in the Southeast, respectfully. Excellent. Tell us about these last three championships in a row. How's that felt? Because you are an original tiger. I'm an original tiger. Um, let's see. It's been fun, challenging, you know, football women. Um, that guy. <laughs> I knew nothing about football. He taught me everything I knew. So I couldn't leave until... Well, he kept promising a national championship every year. <laughs> so uh, I think this time he got it for me. <laughs> you still don't stay, though, right? Because now that you got it, you're staying still, right? Nah, I think this is it. Oh. I think this is it. Oh, wow. That was news for me, y'all. Like, seriously, <laughs> I felt that. No, so seriously, Trina's been around for a very long time. Very known player. 
She would talk crazy, but she would go hard, and she is going to make things happen. Uh, a legend, honestly, in women's flag football. If I had to, if I had to be non-biased, um, because when I first came to the Tigers, you were so you were rough on me at first, and then it was like, okay, all right, you good. All right. We got together a championship too. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So are yeah, you going to stick around? Maybe a different role? I mean, yeah, you know, here and there, but I, I don't want to do it year round. We can't have the same retirement. <laughs> right, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Them, them trenches is real. Them trenches. It's, it's the trenches up there. I'm getting up in age, you know. Not that snapback's not happening like how you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the injuries are staying around. So I'm like, oh, let me. They stay in my, oh my gosh, so that was an exclusive, y'all, and I promise you, I wasn't even ready for that. I didn't know that she was going to say that, because she's such a legend in this city and such a legend to women's flag football. So Tree Tree will not be returning. Hey! Lisa! Real quick, because I saw that you closed and doing it. closing. Two more minutes. Just one more second. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Because Lisa's here. Lisa! What's happening? Austin, share that fun fact about Lisa. Hey! Back again. So Lisa scored more points than any male QB at the Orlando National. You can Next year, I know. Yeah, facts. <laughs> exactly what's gonna happen. Cause next year, next year, <laughs> he's sick. Next year, we're gonna get A and and B. A, uh, five Straight up, we're gonna get we some gorilla glue. Listen, but, next year we're gonna get another one. We got. KI Volume 1 gonna get one, and KI Volume 2 gonna get another one next year. So we'll, we'll replace it. Thank you. Y'all gotta come back with replacements and don't have them near me. Damn, I got excited. I done broke these people trophy, a national trophy. I'm gonna glue it back together. I'm gonna glue Gorilla Glue. I promise. Oh my God. Eric, you gotta give it to me. I'm gonna take it home. I'm gonna glue it. I promise. Oh my, I feel bad, y'all. Now, so, if the director watching, uh, can we have another one, please? Yeah. Can we get another one? Director Hodge, is it? Yes. Yeah. Can we get James? Um, so Lisa, we literally just found out some exclusive, an exclusive drop. Oh, well let me, let me hear it. Trina will not be returning. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're... Oh, that's... Will you be returning? Wow. <laughs> Well, I can't be the oldest person on the team. Oh well, I can't be the oldest person on the team. <laughs> no, Jelena, but Jelena, Jelena gonna be playing since she's 90. We, we not even worried about Jelena. Jelena coming back? Yeah. Jelena's be so back. So I'll be the second oldest. <laughs> okay. No, you will not. <laughs> so yes, you are coming back. The, oh, almost everybody at this table. So I need my old lady game. Okay, that's that's actually shocking. I, I, I got to process this whole thing. I know, right? I know, it was very shocking to me, too, when she yeah, said I gotta that she process was serious. That. I was looking at her eyes, and she was serious. So, um, But, y'all, Lisa's coming back. Jelena's coming back. Obviously, Brando is not going anywhere. She's coming back. So, dang. But Trina's going to be on the sideline. She's going to be around. And I, I, I promise this was going to happen. If the rushers in there not doing a good job, she's going to snatch the uniform, and she'll be I back in the game. So... She'll jump in. So, well, but um, you guys, I want to tell y'all thank you so much for coming. It has been an absolute pleasure. Lisa, I'm brought the party. We're about to get the party started. Yes, thank you so sir. much for watching. I'm your girl, Sonia X. So Hills and Cleese, and we are out. What show's next? Damn, dog, what a trophy. <laughs>